guys, welcome to Overland Effects. So while everybody is in shelter in place and or in quarantine, uh, we decided to do some of the projects that we have been meaning to do and now that we have the time to do it, we're gonna show you how we're gonna do this. So today's project is gonna be improving our Coleman Camp Oven. So if you're not familiar with the Coleman Camp Oven, this thing's amazing. Folds flat, it basically, allows you to cook cookies and lasagna and muffins and anything you want while overlanding. There's gonna be a little wire rack in here that you can adjust and uh, cook have whatever you want. But what I do recommend, and you'll notice on a lot of other YouTube videos for the Coleman Camp Oven, on Amazon there is a rectangular pizza stove that perfectly fits in here. And I highly recommend using it and you'll put it in here below whatever you're cooking. And it just allows the heat to distribute better and reduces the chances of burning whatever it is you're cooking on the bottom. So that's what I do recommend for this. But today, so what we have found is that because there's a lot of holes on the top, on the sides of this camp oven, we want a way to keep the heat in and make this more efficient. So today we're gonna be making like a little blanket cover that will help keep the heat in. And this idea came to us through another YouTube channel called Carry On Vagabond. But they don't actually show how to do this. So today we're gonna do our version of it and see how this works. So I guess follow along and we'll show you how to make this little cover for the Coleman Camp Oven. Okay, so the supplies that we're gonna be using is gonna be this uh, Tillman medium duty welding blanket, three by three. Found it on Amazon, I think it was maybe $36. Got this Nomex Kevlar sewing thread, also on Amazon. I was wishing that they had black, but black was out of stock, so we're gonna do this weird tan color. Got some fabric chalk so that we can easily see where we need to cut on this black fabric. And then big sheets of cardboard to make our template. So this is where I get to step in because I'm really good at building and working on things and measuring. So you're gonna need yourself a tape measure for sure, some type of pencil and or permanent marker so when you start marking on the cardboard that you're good to go. And then I'm gonna use a razor knife. Uh, you can use a pair of scissors. It's just harder when you start making long uh, cuts there. So we're gonna start off with measuring this. Uh, this is not exactly square in the sense that it's not a 12 by 12. Um, so measuring just from the edge to edge here is 11 and 3 quarters, but we do have these two little bump outs. So I'm going to measure from there because that's the biggest spot. And now that is 12 inches total from side to side. Our depth, this, there's no big changes on our depth size here. So I'm just going to measure front to back and our front to back is 11 and 3 quarters. So a little bit smaller on depth wise. Our height. This is where we're gonna be running out because if we're using a, a 36 inch uh, piece, we're only gonna have so much space. So if we go 12 inches here, it means we're gonna approximately have 12 inches straight down. So we may make it so we're gonna be exactly the height that we need. And our height is actually 12 and a quarter tall. So we're gonna be just about a quarter inch short on each edge. We're not worried about the front edge at this point due to the fact that this is where we have to get in and out of the oven. So we're gonna basically make it so we're covering of the five sides that you can see, we're gonna cover the top, two left and right side, and the back side, we're gonna leave the front open. All right, so we've uh, got our cardboard. Our cardboard was actually a little bit bigger, so I've already cut it down, so it's a 30 by 30, 36 by 36 square, which matches the blanket. Um, so now I'm gonna just basically find center on this to start working up our uh, profile. Um, I'm just going to warn you that the dog's going to come in and probably lick me or get in the way. So as I'm working, just kind of a heads up. Bogey likes to be in the middle of everything. So um, getting my parts and pieces together. So now I'm going to measure, because this is 36 inches, I'm going to measure to 18 to find center. Just got a line. And then another double check. Okay, that's 36. Find my line I just put on there. Okay. We go to 18 as well. So I'm gonna double check. 
checking. Okay, 18 again. And you go 18 as well. Okay, so now I found my center point. So that's the very top center of where we're going to put this. All right, so we measured that I got to make the decision on which side I want to make my left and right and first my front and back. Okay, so I'm going to make this the back and make this way the front. Make this left, backwards out, make this way the right side. All right, so we know that the front to back, the depth was 11 and a half. So I'm going to have to make my marks out here to make it so that it's 11 and a half. So I'm going to go, excuse me, 11 and three quarters. So 11 and three quarters is basically five and seven eighths. So I'm going to go five and seven eighths from here. Put a mark, go to 11 and three quarters on this end here. Okay. So I basically got my front and back marked and I want to make it right at 12 and a quarter on my, my width. So 12 and a quarter. So I'm going to add an extra eighth to each side to make it 12 and a quarter total. Okay. So now this is my top. So what I'm going to do is I forgot to tell you, I'm going to use a straight edge. So I'm going to measure these marks out on these sides and I'm going to basically make some straight lines. Um, so we're going to probably time lapse this part because it'll take a long time to do it, but I'm basically just um, section it off. So we have the top squared out and then at the sides. So that way we have this edges cut and then we'll make it work from there. So now that we've got this marked out, as you can see here, it just almost looks like we're ready to start playing tic-tac-toe. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the corner pieces here because we know that these are the pieces that we're not gonna use. At which point, I'm gonna leave a little bit on each side so when we go to sew it together so it's not too tight. So that way we have a little bit of a notch here so it can slide on and off instead of trying to have to push it down on it a little bit. So we're gonna put a little bit of fudge factor in there, all right? And then I'm gonna cut off the front part here because this is the section we're not gonna use at all. So basically, I'm just gonna come straight across like this for this section, all right? So we're gonna time lapse it again, and here we go. Now that we've got this uh, all cut out and cut out the way we want it to be, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically make a slight cut here and here so that, that way we have that little extra fold out that we were talking about. So when she goes to sew it together, all these pieces can be pushed together so she makes it a nice about quarter inch edge so she has a little extra space for it. But here's our template that we're gonna use to transfer to the welding blanket. So uh, I just took a straight edge and kind of bent the cardboard here and here, to try to get a feel for where it's gonna be at, as well as this backside. So I'm gonna just now take it up and put it onto the camp oven and test it to see how it looks. So here we go. Okay. So it's tight, front and back. And we have a little bit of edges on the side. So kind of got the, the whole idea of what we could do here. If anything, um, I say it's gonna be pretty well shaped for this and we'll go from there. Okay, so now we're gonna be marking from the template to the actual welding blanket. Uh, put this out here. Okay, and then what we did find through our test run is that Taylor's chalk, for whatever reason, leaves no marks on welder's blanket. 
So we're actually going to be using a uh, Milwaukee paint pen for this. And now we'll cut this out. Okay, so now we're actually ready to start fitting and sewing this together. Okay, so now we're just gonna be doing a little test fit of this onto the actual camp oven. Fit this on here, see how this fits. So basically this is what it looks like. And we're just gonna be sewing along this back edge here on both sides. But this is a really great snug fit and it should work great. So sewing time. So this is the finished project. We were originally going to try to use a sewing machine on this, but because this fabric is so thick and the thread is so thick, it actually broke my sewing machine needle. So had to hand stitch, and this is about the extent of my skills with sewing. So we're going to test fit this now on the camp oven. So that looks pretty darn good. I mean, the purpose of this is to help seal up these vents that are up on top where the handle is and on the edges here. So hopefully this will be more efficient on the gas use and help regulate the oven temperature a little better. So I hope you enjoyed our little off-road gadget project while we're all in shelter in place. Um, hit like. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel. We'll have some more videos coming up on how to do things, um, some product reviews. So until next time, let's get out there and explore in place. <laughs>